Welcome to episode 61, Microsoft Part 3, Bill Gates and the Evil Empire. This is an outline of episode 61. So, what is an evil empire? In business, it means using monopolistic power to crush young startups through illegal tactics. What is interesting about Microsoft, it was started by two idealistic nerds in a college dormitory not too long ago. So how did Microsoft become an evil empire? Let's compare the numbers. In 1975, Microsoft had two employees. IBM had 150,000 employees. I'm going to tell the story of the evil empire backwards. I will start with DOJ, Department of Justice, filed antitrust suit against Microsoft in 1998. On May 18, 1998, the Justice Department and 20 states' attorneys general filed antitrust suits against Microsoft. The Justice Department has charged Microsoft with engaging in anti-competitive and exclusionary practices designed to maintain its monopoly in personal computer operating systems and attempting to extend that monopoly to Internet browser software. It was one of the largest antitrust actions in American history. Microsoft was allegedly using its operating system monopoly to choke the life out of Netscape. November 2001, the Justice Department and nine of our state co-plaintiffs out of 19, I believe, uh, agreed to settle the case. These are the two conclusions of DOJ. Three years later, the Justice Department finally reached an agreement with Microsoft to settle the antitrust case. Microsoft agreed to share its application programming interfaces with third-party developers and in a subsequent settlement paid $750 million to Netscape's now parent company, AOL. This is after 11 years of investigation from 1990 to 2001. 21 years ago, the FTC begins investigating Microsoft uh, for possible uh, violations of the antitrust laws through its licenses for computer operating systems. By the mid-90s, Microsoft's aggressive tactics begin to backfire. Competitors accuse the software giant of monopolizing the industry. The bundling of the software led to the Department of Justice investigating a lot of claims that Microsoft's business practices were unfair. They were. DOJ takes over the case from the FTC. Uh, DOJ investigates. One year later, in 1994, the DOJ files a complaint against Microsoft alleging violations for licensing. At the same time, they file a consent decree, um, uh, which is similar to one filed by the Europeans uh, that restricts Microsoft's licensing practices and has a provision that says, essentially, uh, you can't tie, very much a sort of tying kind of provision. Uh, so that Microsoft starts to bundle additional programs with their operating systems. Now, anyone who buys a PC automatically gets Microsoft spreadsheets, word processors, and other programs, whether they want them or not. As CEO Jim Barksdale pointed out in congressional testimony, How many of you use a PC without Microsoft's operating system? Gentlemen, that's a monopoly. That's a lock. That's a hundred percent. Microsoft refuted the accusations, asserting that Internet Explorer was not bundled with, but integrated into Windows, and that they had done nothing to prevent Netscape from competing in the marketplace. Netscape was started by 21-year-old Mark Andreessen and Eric Beiner. Andreessen was a graduate student in computer science at the University of Illinois Urbana. The common goal, at least, was simple, if ambitious. Introduce the whole world to the Internet. If you've browsed the Internet, you've used his creation. Mark had that insight that the Internet would someday be like the telephone system. Everyone would need a window into this new technology. Here was this young rock star from the University of Illinois who had created a product that had a million users in nine months. Mark Andreessen co-founded a revolutionary startup that kicked off the dot-com boom. The company goes public, bam, we're out of the blocks at 40, 50, 56 dollars a share. But his remarkable company was crushed in the historic battle for dominance of the internet. I understand that you're one of the co-founders of Microsoft, is that correct? 
Yes, Microsoft set its sights on the web, and they eventually got it. They killed us as a company. Wow. Being one of the most popular computer programs in the world got them noticed by the competition. Windows 95 was being previewed, and we, Netscape, as a developer, were invited to come up for the launch. My staff member came back and she said, you're not going to believe it, but Bill Gates came by our booth and just kept staring at the browser. It was pretty clear that we were in his crosshairs. But the once groundbreaking startup had already begun to crumble. They lost over $88 million in the fourth quarter and laid off 400 employees. Their once mighty market share had dwindled by 30% more and more customers away from Netscape. It's almost inconceivable that they were able to get away with that. To take and put their browser, attach it to their operating system. Essentially, you know, kiss Netscape on the cheek and say goodbye. Windows was shipping about 200 million copies a year, so it became a life and death struggle for Netscape very, very quickly. At the time of the acquisition, Mark Andreessen was 27 years old and worth over $100 million he became the chief technology officer of AOL. Before we debate whether Microsoft was a monopoly, I think we should trace Bill Gates' attitude towards intellectual property. Intellectual property has the shelf life of a banana. Bill Gates' father was a lawyer. So while Bill Gates was doing the cut and paste or bundling software copy from competitors, if the other companies complain, Bill Gates would simply say, go sue me. Then it would take years of litigation. By then, the startup has already died or gone bankrupt. But Bill Gates is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. There are two aspects to this world view. First, he's paranoid, and he watches every step of his competitors. Second, Bill Gates had studied the history of tech companies. Bill Gates' conclusion is, for any tech company, one big mishap, and you die. IBM would survive the Microsoft onslaught with a near-death experience in 1995. Apple would survive by ending the war with Microsoft in 1997. Apple continued to invent products that users love, and Apple would outgrow Microsoft as the world's largest corporation. Bill Gates, who had long been considered Jobs' main rival, would invest in Apple Computer. Microsoft invested 150 as much success. Steve, I love you! And Steve came back and began what I think is the greatest turnaround in the Most companies did not survive the onslaught of Bill Gates' copycat without paying royalty. I give you three examples here. The secret of Bill Gates is not cut and paste others' software, but hire and kill. Bill Gates would recruit the best programmers from his competitors. Example one. Hiring Charles Simone from Xerox Park. I already covered this in episode 59. Simone would produce two of Microsoft's biggest cash cows, Word and Excel, earning Microsoft billions of dollars in profit, and in addition to killing two of Microsoft's competitors, Word Perfect and Lotus 1, 2, 3. Example two, how Microsoft killed digital. Microsoft would hire Dave Cutler away from digital to produce Windows NT series of servers. Pictures of Dave Cutler working for Microsoft. Example 3. How Microsoft killed Ballin. Ballin was a small innovative software company founded by a couple of Danish programmers. Their flagship product was Ballin C++. Here's a picture of the entire Ballin development team. Microsoft would come in and hire away almost the entire team to develop Visual C++. Ballin, now without his star programmers, quickly died. Two events combined to eventually knock the winds out of Bill Gates. They were first long years of litigation, almost a decade. Second, bad public image. In 2000, Bill Gates stepped down as CEO of Microsoft, Bill Gates 2.0, from year 2000 to the present. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your comments and questions below. My next video will be Bill Gates, the Charity King. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.